Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. So today we're going to look at the ePortfolio. And that's the ePortfolio that was created in Google Sites. I'm going to give you some organization tips. So what I'm going to do now is to look at how you can take your ePortfolio to another level. So we're moving from the basic and we're going to take it up a little notch there because you want the user to be able to navigate through your e-portfolio just like they would do with a normal site. So I'm going to go to the workspace that I'll be using. And uh, here I am in that space. If you notice, this states Janelle's e-portfolio 2020 to 2021 journey. You're not going to create a site for each academic year. Your portfolio is an addition. So what you're going to do is that each year, if it is that you work on it last year, you had your site from last year, what you're going to do is to do sub pages so that you can um, incorporate this year into it, right? So as you go along, you update it. So you're not required to do another e-portfolio from scratch in the site and uh, there are other applications that you can use in order to create your e-portfolio you could use powerpoint and using powerpoint of course then you're going to basically create it like you can create a book in powerpoint you can create a folder in powerpoint and the pages are flipped like you're using a regular book or folder all right, and there are other things that you can use. You can use Canva. There are other um, applications that you can use. So as indicated earlier, I have 2020 to 2021 journey. Of course, what I will do this year is to change this so that it can be general to basically incorporate the other year because I have to update mine to incorporate this year. So. The first thing that I'm going to do is look, look at some areas in settings. There are two ways in which you can access settings. If you look to the left, then you would notice that the navigation setting is highlighted here. Once you toggle over the, the, um, the bar, the show bar, then the setting icon would be activated to the left. So you can access it from there or you could access it from the top right here. So I'm gonna use either one. So we're in settings and I'm gonna look at navigation settings first. My navigation um, mode is to the side. That's why side is, at the side is light highlighted and you could put it to the top if you want. If you put it to the top, then it would appear like this. Okay, now I'm gonna put back it to the side because I prefer it to the side. If you want it to be transparent, then um, you select that. Right now, mine is transparent. If you want it to be white, if you select white, you would notice that the top changes to white right there. And um, if you want it to be black, then that is how it would appear. So we're going back into setting. I'm going to change that mine to transparent. Now, you can add brand images and the brand images like you're seeing right here, you're seeing my logo there. It depends on what you wanna put there for your logo. Of course, this is not what I use for my portfolio that I've submitted at work. Now, once you put in, you have selected a logo image, then of course it would automatically give you a theme color that you can select. It's up to you what you want to select for your theme color. Or remember, you could access themes from right here. No, um, you have Favicon. And what is Favicon? Favicon is basically an icon associated with your site. And it appears to the left of the, the name of the site. Like for example, you're seeing the Google Drive tab activated here. I mean Google Drive and to the left, you see the Google Drive icon. So wherever you see this icon, you know it is Google Drive, right? So basically your Favicon 
they refer to it as tab icon, website icon, URL icon. It's also called a bookmark icon, just the same. It's basically branding your website. So it's up to you if you want to add a favicon. Once you add it, it will, it will appear like you're seeing the icon beside to the left of my drive. Just the same for the my e-portfolio. If you look closely, you would see my favicon right there. So we're going back into that. Um, in terms of selecting it, say for example, that wasn't there, what you would do is to select upload and you select the image from your device. So I'm going to upload back my icon. Okay, and there is nothing for you to save, it is automatically saved, right? Um, one more thing is announcement banners. You can use announcement banner. Um, what you would have to do is to select show banner. You decide on the color that you want to use and you put in your announcement. You can add a button and link it to whatever you want to link it to. So you, you put in the title of the button and then you put in your link. Your link could be to a specific page on your site or it could be linked to another URL, whatever you want to link it to. What you would do if it is an external one, you would copy the URL and paste, and paste it right there. And uh, again, if it is that you want to make it visible on all pages, you would have to ensure that you select all pages or if it's just a front page and you can see home page only. Let me give you a little preview of what the banner would look like. So on this side, I have a banner. And uh, if you notice the same CSEC QA classes begin September, you're seeing register here. If I should go to view publish site, um, once I select register here, then it, this is a banner that is presented there. Register here, you're noticing that you can click it because the arrow changed to the and, and uh, it basically indicating that it is linked to something. So if you select that, then it will take you to the item that it was linked to. All right, so that is basically the banner. So we're going back into the site and I am going to go to demo page. That was already added. You know to add the demo page if you notice. Once I go to the navigation pane, you're not able to see demo page from the left. Once you're in the workspace, you may not see all the pages once it is to the left. If it's the top, then of course you'll get the arrows and then you can select. But um, I am going to go to pages to navigate to that page and I'm gonna scroll down and then I'll go to demo page. Now, in terms of the page, what I'm going to do first is to show you how to add sub pages. If you want to add a sub page to this one, all you have to do is to ensure that you select the three dots that are to the right of the page that you want to add the sub page to. You can make it home page, you can duplicate it. So those are the options. You can duplicate it, you can go to properties, add sub page, hide from navigation. So if you want to add a page, you could do that. Or if you want to delete a page, you can delete a page. But what I want to do is to add sub page. So I'm going to just give it a name. So I'm just going to call it name and then select done. This is how it would appear. So it is below the page that you added it to. And if you notice the side to the left of the page, like you add that sub page, there is an arrow pointing down. So indicating that you're within that page. And uh, of course, you can always add sub page that duplicated, et cetera. In terms of duplicating a page, say for example, you want to keep the same template that you add for a previous page, you could go ahead and duplicate the page and then that would be less work for you. So you can just create a general page and once the templates are gonna be the same, once the sections are going to be the same, you can just duplicate the page and delete what you don't want and edit accordingly. That way you would go faster. Instead of every minute you, you create a page, then you're going to just go through that same process of editing that page, adding sections, etc. 
So we're still looking at sub pages. What if you want a page that was already created to be a sub page of another? What you can do is to, so I'm gonna use teaching records as the example, is to click on the page. So let's click on it. Hold down on your cursor and drag it to the page that you want it to be. So if I want this to be a sub page of the demo page, notice right now the demo page is highlighted once you toggle over it. All you'll have to do now is to just release and automatically it is now a sub page of the demo page. Now, what if you didn't want this page to be right here? This is not the actual setup of the, the, your site. You want this page to be elsewhere. So say, for example, you want it to be before name, the page that is labeled name right here. Again, select the page, hold on on your cursor, and you pull it. You drag it to where you want it. So notice it is now indicated that it will fall in this location between demo page and name and you just release the cursor and it is you now arranged in the area where you specifically want it to be. Now, so I'm going back into, as a matter of fact, I want to report the changes that I've made to teaching records. So I'm going to select undo and until it takes it back to the location where it was like share and don't forget to subscribe